What's up everybody, welcome back. We appreciate you being here. So we've got a special video today. This is kind of interesting. We're rocking the two cameras. We've got four people here, plus a special guest behind the scenes, making sure that we don't go too off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Today's video should be interesting. So second video for Ryan, you're like a veteran now. Hey, we're here. We're here. We're doing it. Riley, thanks for being here. I still feel like a guest in my own show. <laughs> and we got Matt back. Yep. Matt, thanks for being here, brother. Like a VIP guest almost. Dude, this is like getting more regular, but it's good. And yeah, it even, is. even if we can't get the in-person stuff going, people find a lot of value from the calls that we've yep. doing too. So I think it's really good. And it's really, if you think back just to like a couple of years ago when you just got started creating content, yeah. even when you create, you, you, we all do it. We create content to bring value to people. You do it with your pictures and the videos that mm -hmm. you've made previously. You create content similar to me with mm -hmm. the financial education. Very similar, yeah. So when you can actually sit down with people where the audience kind of asks for it and then give them exactly what they want, it's a pretty cool thing to do. It is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we pulled some questions from my Instagram, from Matt's Instagram, and I think we're just going to kind of run through and see if we can link a couple together. Hopefully we can get them all, but if not, it's fine. Yeah. The first one, I think it's a good place for us to start. Let's go around. I want everybody to give, I'll go last, so Matt, if you want to kick us off, everybody give the best piece of financial advice that you've ever gotten. Whoa. It's That's heavy, dude. That is. <laughs> yeah. But what, think about it, because try to be concise with it, too. Hmm. That's a tough one, actually. I'd say the best piece of financial advice that I've ever gotten was to have realistic expectations, because you'll get humbled really fast. I think going into it, I had high, overly high expectations, which, which led me to almost be unmotivated in a sense, because like you're like, well, I'm supposed to be doing this in my head, but I'm not. And it's a real, it's a reality check. So I think going in with, you know, reasonable expectations will get you further than you think. I like that. What do you got, Ryan? Make more than you spend. Make more than you spend. I still coupon. Like, hell yeah, <laughs> I can save a buck, I'll do it. <laughs> That's a good one. It's good. That's like my dad's old advice. What do you got, Ryan? Anything good? Yeah, mine is a little different because I talk to people about this daily. Right. And I think it's um, math. Is black and white but we still make decisions about our money with our gut so that you have to feel it like emotions still drive our behavior so i think sometimes we get tied behind the numbers of like oh it's black or white it's real simple but it's not right we still you need to feel good about it you need to know the decisions and understand why you're making decisions so when it comes to planning or, or how you're going to move forward not only does the math make sense but it feels good too That's really so i think just it's not necessarily a device but like for yourself knowing that you have to connected to. No, I like that. And there's actually a question that we can go to. I, dude, yeah. that was kinetic that like we thought that. That was a good segue. <laughs> but I'll give you mine real quick. It's just always know your risk. If you don't know your risk, you should not be investing, shouldn't be trading, shouldn't be getting into that business, anything. You have to know the risk yeah. as well as you can. Like, of course, when you're talking about like partnerships or business opportunities, there's unforeseen risks. Things happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that picture of all the twisted tees spilled out on the. We saw this truck today on Twitter. It crashed in Pennsylvania with all these twisted tees. As soon as I saw all the twisted tee on the ground, my brain was like, "Hey, it's like a lost trade. That com twisted tee's exactly not going out of business." Yeah. yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So know your risk. They know that that's a risk in their business, but they keep moving. Mm -hmm. You know where risks. So 100. That's definitely the best advice that I've gotten so far. Yeah. So that question that we can kind of tie back to what you said was from. And this was, in, I think, on your page, Matt. Do you yeah. know who that guy is? Rodolfo? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Rodolfo P. Lock 10. I think that's how yeah. we'll say his name. He said, how to know when your trading is emotional and how to avoid it. I'm going to let Riley start us off because I think she'll have a good answer for this. How to know when your trading is emotional and how to avoid it. Hmm. Well, I feel like it depends on what emotion you're feeling because I think different emotions can evoke different things. But ultimately, if you're trading and anywhere like in your trading whether it's your entry your exit or in the middle of your trade where you're trying to take off a piece of your trade whatever if you're kind of confused about any of it and you're not looking at your system which gives you clear yes or no what are you supposed to do i think that's when you can tell like you're getting a little emotional because you're veering away from your trading plan okay what do you think matt i think if you are in a position and then you have to think while you're in it. I think you're emotional to get into it. Could be I, I think you should be in a trade and it's black or white. There's no in between like, oh shit, maybe, I don't know. And I'll add, you should know your exit. Just like yeah. we're just talking about. 100%. You should know your exit, yeah. right? Going back to you, do you have anything to add to that? I know you aren't an active trader, but- Yeah, not in the active like trading perspective, but I think you have to think ahead of how you would feel if you lost that particular trade or that whatever you're, you're doing and investing in or whatever, and how would you feel if you want it? And, and focus on those emotions and then uh, 
identify when one starts creeping up. Right. Right. Because like I don't know if you're in it, if you see things start going like no like okay right. like you said know your exit. You can right? know you, and also yeah. know you're going off. But the also know what it feels like to win it. Yeah. Right. Because I think you have to celebrate that too and know what that that feel like and, and even if it's a small win. It's still a win. You right? should also even, I think to some extent, especially with the trading, you should almost feel like the, when it's a good trade, especially to what you said about a system, if it fits the system, you can almost see it as a winner. Like you just said, like yeah. see it being a winning trade. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. could be something to kind of keep your emotions on check. But I know I'm getting emotional when literally I've used this whoop thing to look at my heart rate as I'm like getting ready for a trade and I can actually see the heart rate speed up. So I know that there's some things going on there. I also know like I get sweaty. We have like a joke at, with our group that like it's sweaty pits and like there's like ASFX. Like, <laughs> but it's funny because it's like I'm a sweaty guy. So like when I start trading, if I get really sweaty, I know that I'm probably thinking about it too much almost like you said, it yeah. should be black and you white. shouldn't have to if you're thinking you almost shouldn't have to yeah. think about it you should know the system literally up where you're not thinking about literally it. i kind of just black out and just and like i, I you remember the last time we talked my forex account was not funded right i funded it my first trade being Wait, back i think we have like a i'm back you can't hear it but it's clapping right <laughs> yeah, now. yeah i'm back you're back <laughs> Yeah, I took my first trade, um, I think, earlier this week on the S&P. Nice. You know, I, I did see that you posted yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, it was a runner. It was How, a good one. Did you find any emotions in that trade since it was like your first trade back in a while? Yeah, I actually did because think about it. I'm buying an all-time high. Right. So How do like, I feel? Yeah, right. I had a complete setup you for a lot. You crazy. Yeah, but I mean, the technicals lined up and I just, I personally did not feel comfortable buying at that high. So I was a little bit emotional, but I was like, you know what? Technicals are technicals. I have my risk. Calculated and played out well. Yeah, perfect. It played out really so well. No job on at all. Your emotions right. almost played against you. Like your system was telling you, hey bro, like it's lining up. And I listened. In this. I listened. Yeah. Well, sometimes the system will go against like the narrative that the herd believes. Like it'll go yeah. against herd mentality. So yeah. you have to be steadfast in the system when it disagrees with everybody else. You know and that's why you have a black and white system. Right, for if sure. If this, then that. So speaking of that, since we're at all time highs, mm -hmm. before we get into the metals, some people were asking thoughts on the dollar index. Thoughts on Euro USD? It, will there be another market crash? What's going on with that? Do you want to give us some input on what you think? Just because right now, I think since the last time we talked, the big change is that the stock market, SPY, did break for a new all time. High. It did. So it, now it's actually higher it did. than it was, even when we were talking. Yeah. And it's, I mean, if you had bought the dip, you'd be up in Tesla like 600% if you yeah. bought the coronavirus dip, 700% yeah. some of these stocks. Yeah. People would call that euphoric. So it they would say us breaking these highs, it's euphoric, which we know what comes after that stage in the market cycle, downhill from there. So what do you think? Personally, I think um, my focus has gauged towards out of the stock market. I'm looking at the bond market right now. So I was listening to something this morning and it, I feel like it's in a massive story. I think it's huge I, I, and it's not being- Well, share it with us. Don't yeah, it, the, the attention's not on there. So essentially what's going on, if, you, if nobody knows what bonds is, I'm just gonna assume everybody does. Bonds are basically an IOU that the government will issue to people like us, to other governments, to anybody really, right? Yeah, and I'm, I'm going it's down- debt. Yeah, exactly. I'm going down the the alley of other governments. So right. essentially, China had about roughly over a trillion treasury bonds, 10 years, and they just announced that they want to reduce their balance sheet down to 800 billion. So what does that mean? They're going to be selling US treasuries to in so, back to the US in what substantial that amounts. That so would be- if the doll, if the bond market goes down, the dollar goes with it. It's going to be detrimental, yeah, because that is basically bonds are what the faith in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So when nobody wants to hold treasuries anymore, they're no longer having faith, faith in, the US. in our U.S. But why would we even buy it back from them? We don't. The Federal Reserve is the biggest buyer, and now they're going to be the only buyer because who's going to want to buy? So the government billion? isn't buying them back. The Federal, the Federal Reserve, Reserve is, is not even from China. Yeah, interesting. Yes. And that, I feel like that's like one of the biggest stories over it. That, that could be a domino to, effect. Why would the Fed want to lower the value of the dollar? Maybe if they have a digital currency coming, collapse the dollar I, I before think, that. I think CB, it's, what is it? C Central bank, CBC, central bank cryptos, central bank currency. Oh yeah, I made a post about that actually. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think they intentionally want to lower it. I think that they've gotten handed a pot of just shit and like they're just gonna put salt in there really <laughs> literally yeah, yeah like there's nothing they can really they do the house is on fire and they're letting it burn down. oh yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. i think they do have a backup plan though to you know reform our monetary policies and move to others yeah for sure behind what gold I, that i can't i don't know it's that's the tough everybody comments on my thing like i said something on twitter about that today like going forward would we go back to a gold standard yeah like, we've talked about that where they put gold boop let's just call it a ten thousand an ounce and we go behind a standard yeah. like something like that yeah or do they have something under their sleeve with like a crypto like a digital currency i think it's definitely gonna be a digital currency whether it's backed by something i don't know but to get people's faith i think they must 
say something that it's backed by because that's the only way the herd will feed into it. Here's an interesting question. Can a crypto be backed by gold? Most certainly. Definitely can? Yeah. Mm. Most certainly. That would be cool. It could definitely could. Right? Yeah, that would be very interesting. That would be a pretty good definition of like a decentralized mark actual market because yeah. it's a limited supply yeah. of something but it's still decentralized. And considering it's on blockchain tough technology you can't really manipulate it right. so it is what it is you're not going to print up more paper you know i tweeted because i closed a piece of my bitcoin position last week as it started to come down and now we're sitting right at about ten thousand right yeah. yeah a little bit lower now it actually yeah. broke ten thousand again yesterday really yeah and i was saying to people but i was on vacation <laughs> i was saying to people that my thoughts have kind of shifted a little bit towards it and I'm interested to know what you guys think because you guys are more not on the investment side of it, on the trading side of it, you're on the everyday side of the crypto stuff. I see a future in digital currencies. Like we're talking about this central bank stuff. I definitely see that. But that doesn't mean it's going to be Bitcoin. That's all my thought is. Like I can't, there's so many coins. There's so many new things to come. How can we say that Bitcoin has to be it? You know, the only people that say that are people on Twitter. But then in everyday reality, we're at the food store, grocery store. No one's using Bitcoin. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're still far from that. So that's why I'm not sold on Bitcoin. What do you guys think? Well, I think we're far off from the crypto. I What's think, far off? 10 years? I, I can't put a time on it, but the government, they're, they're dragging their, their feet on, on a lot of things. Like, they're not, the government's not quick to adapt. No, they like, react. They, yeah. The market had, the market says, okay, this is what we're doing. And the government's in, like, however many years behind. So I, like the fact of like, oh, like I'm not so worried as you guys are sitting here worried about the dollar crash. No. No, because I, I, on the other side of like the money world that I live in, no one's worried about it. They yeah. actually just said another round of QE's coming out, by the way. Right. Just more, off more your, money printing. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. Like, your, what do you mean on your side of things? Be clear on that. Like on the investment side of things where you see people yeah. buying stocks, getting just, into the market, yeah, still just I putting mean, money into this idea that it's going to keep going up over time, buy the dip, long-term investing is going to win. For the market, that, that's kind of the, th I mean, if you look, just look over the uh, history, we know that history like repeats itself. Hold right here. History repeats hold, itself. Don't hold the quote. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. No, you're good. They got me on this thing, you know. <laughs> 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 no, um, looking at, you know, if you just look over the back of the history of the, of the market in general and mm -hmm. think about all the world events that's gone on during that those times. Like, yes, this is weird because now we're living it, we're experiencing it for ourselves. But, but it's not the end of the world. Is what you're saying. No, it's not going to be the end. Well, because crazy things have happened in, prior to our lifetime. And you think the dollar survives? I think the dollar survives. I don't. I don't think it's as big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, now, it, our country's still very new, and like worlds are changing quickly. Like, I mean, look what just happened in the last however many months. But I think we're, you're underestimating how strong of a world power the U.S. is within the global economy. It's a fair point. Like when you don't take that into consideration, like me being in the military and us just having that military strength over everyone, who's gonna come in and say, no, we're not gonna take your dollar. We'll just, like, we'll yeah. kind of force their hand because we can. Maybe. So like, there's a lot of power more than just what's happening on the charts or monetary thing because like, we got big ass missiles. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So like, what it, do you think, Matt? We can flex. I, I think that you, you're going back to history, like you said, if you look through history, there's been not a single currency that has survived. Not one. All of them have crashed. I don't know why it's going to be different this time if we're repeating the same mistakes throughout history that we've done. So that's number one. I don't see a change. The behavior is the same. The printing is the same. Fiscal and monetary policies are the same. Mm -hmm. How is it going to survive? It can't. Because yes, you just see it losing value. Yeah, it is. Because it is. there's so much. It is. These Converse that I'm wearing, my dad bought them for six bucks. Right. I spent 70. Right. It's already failing in right. front of our face. But we're young enough to say, oh, you know, I don't really see it. I don't know what's happening, but yeah, but yeah, we have homeless, right. homeless um, rates at all time highs. All -time like we've highs. never seen right. so many homeless people. Unemployment still at like ten percent. It's and and then we have these phony numbers coming back. So we had just massive job cuts, right, for COVID. Now the people that have been laid off have gotten their jobs back. Is this temporary? Is 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 that a real number? Them. It's weird. Some not even all. Gotten their jobs back, but some people, like other jobs, are still laying off people. Like yeah, jobs have come back, but they're still a new every week now. A million people new. On, exactly. So, on, so the numbers like, are skewed. They're they're false. You know, they're they're falsified data. But what? So just to stay on the dollar. Yeah. What, what do you? All of those components, like the low. Um, well, he, he was saying how the unemployment rate. The how does that impact to you? The future as a trader. The dollar. No, 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 just in gen in general, what you're thinking? Because he's saying it, on his side, the uh -huh. dollar isn't gonna. You know, we're at like 93 right now. The dollar index. Uh -huh. 
maybe we get back up over 100, some people think. Some people, like Peter Schiff says, we're taking out 80 and then going to 60. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm more on that bias, actually. Well, we, we definitely know that. And, and then and then he made a, a point of where we can almost force them, right? Yeah. But in all, all actuality, Russia and China have been doing business for years, bypassing the dollar just through trade. A lot of people are doing just trade. Well, what, that's through their own currency, right? Like China doesn't. Well, no, money. let's say your, your country, Austin, and you have a plethora of oil resources and I have a plethora of yeah. um, copper. We make deals. We just trade. Got it. We bypass the dollar and that's Got happening it. right Got now. It. Got it. So the dollar's already being, you know, under Bypass. the nose. Yeah. Exactly. It's already happening. I guess where maybe it's more extreme and like I would, I kind of sit in the middle of both of you is like, I don't think we're going to go to like a Zimbabwe. I don't, maybe we are. That would yeah, be, I, I don't, I, I don't you know. know what I mean, that would be the extreme. That'd be like, fucked we're, up. We're like paying for like stuff with wheelbarrows of money. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that'd be terrible. But I also don't know if we're going to see the dollar as strong as it was just because like, to me, I like to look to history the same way, excuse me, the same way we see like good trading systems yeah. built. We find them by looking backwards. Look throughout history. What currency has lasted forever? Well, so to that point on, okay, yeah, so no, but you're, the they time span right that you're looking at yeah. is thousands of years of, yeah. of civilizations, yes. right? So th I think there's some naivete to say that you think that something like that would happen within the next 60. No, for sure, but I, I'm thinking, you know what I I mean? think, like, like, let me just make that point too, and then I want to hear what you're going to say. I'm looking like, because like Ray Dalio, like he would study like the Roman civilization and how throughout the Roman history, even though they lasted thousands of years, the different rulers would try different forms of currency and how they would fail and they would overprint or they would underprint and they could never get it right. They can never make it last. The dollar is the longest running fiat currency in history. And the only reason then you have to look at the fiat part of that is because that makes it more short term since we've been printing money and not using money like this. Because well, back in that day, they were using that still. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and that's only the last, when did we, 1913. When, no, when did we get off the gold standard? The 70s? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like that's yeah. not that long ago. Like yeah. that's the craziest thing. It's like, it, it's, I think very, we have to say not probabilistic, but realistic to say, think, listen, that was not long ago. We and we're, back we've to already lost 90% of our- Right, we can easily, power. oh, you know what? We need to make a left turn and go back. We need to actually go back to a metal standard because yeah. this is getting out of control. It is. What if somebody said that? We'd be like, okay, that was only the seventies. We made a mistake. You know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. And also I feel like it's a little naive to think it couldn't happen in your lifetime because hmm. it's like something like that does kind of just happen like over a short for sure to the masses but to us it doesn't this is coming this has been a coming. yeah and it's already been kind of in it. coming right yeah well, what were you gonna say back then well i not i had i would like playing on the other side of the fence because i think no, you have to. a little better yeah, well-rounded yeah. perspective 100%. on this and like i think there's a lot of bias of, of like if you only listen to the same people saying the same thing of course you're going to go down the rabbit hole you have to look on the other side what big bigger institutions are doing than either than peter schiff or whatever right like yeah. what are these that are controlling Engine billions funds. of yeah, dollars yeah. you know 200 yeah. they, that these the endowments. companies uh, insurance companies that 250 billion you don't think they're not looking ahead to what's happening to the dollar and where they're they're, they're putting the money so even if the no one's holding cash per se right like the, for sure but so even if the Some standard people believe in deflation are that that's uh, but, yeah. but you, my point to there yeah. is that even if the standard changes like still commodities if, if this isn't dollars anymore that we care about right it, whatever it is you can still change your house in for however many bitcoin you're right the, your the business it, it won't be worth the dollars anymore it'll be worth however many right wheelbarrows of apples i right? understand you well the, the largest person on your side of the fence the most successful oh i'm sorry no, the most successful investor warren buffett we all know right yeah so if you take the stock market, you can break it into different sectors. You have financials, which is banks, you have energies and so forth, right? He just sold billions of dollars in financials, which is if you're investing in financials, you're basically saying, I have faith in the dollar. He sold all his financials and moved to gold. So to your note of saying the other side of the fence has billions of dollars going into financials. I think that's false because their biggest leader has already sold. Well, so I don't mean gold. into financials in terms of like the banks and things like that. That's different. Like just because you're putting money in the stock market doesn't mean you're you can be in a different sector. Just like you said, like technology or something yeah, else. Yeah. So it doesn't just because there's companies out there that are trading U.S. two hundred fifty billion dollars in their general accounts uh -huh. or whatever. They don't necessarily need to be buying the banks though. They're, they're they are diversified around, which then holds the strength of. The United States essentially, for because we're diversified more than just. I think you both can be correct in your points. You well, can be correct, and you can be correct because yeah, because I don't think there is a right or wrong answer. answer. I think the bigger point is that the banks are not a direct representation of the financial health of our economy. Right, and I think asset prices right now too, kind of back to what we were talking about the euphoric stage. You know, so this is a good question that I kind of have for both of you yeah. because of the size that you both come from. 
Like when it's pretty cool. I like this. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, when you sit down with people like Matt that are a little bit concerned about the future value of their dollars, what's the most calming or most foundationally like solid advice you can give them to make them feel like you should be still believing in the dollar? Do you ever try to convince them and how do you do that? Well, it's rare that you have people with these extreme other sides of the view. Um, but no, I think it just comes down to their goals and what they really think they're going to do otherwise then. Like, it, it really, that's all it comes down to. What are your goals and where you want to be? And how do you get there? And what is, what, what do you, what, let's say that what you think doesn't happen, mm -hmm. then, then what? Yeah, exactly. I, I think I'll, people would look at that argument of like the other side of that point of let me just stick my head in the sand and like not worry about this. I'm just going to keep doing what everybody else has been doing over time. And then the other side of that is, well, you don't want to be doing that if something is throwing flags well, in front of you. You know what I mean? Well, if, you're, if you're hitting speed bumps, this you should slow down. Yeah, and I don't think just because you're avoiding, like, it just comes to what's your risk, right? How right. how risk averse are you from that topic? Right. Because then don't put all your eggs in that basket, right? right. Or, 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 or break it up. Now, whatever. Do you ever see advisors or anything like that getting into the idea of, Telling people, do you think to buy crypto and to diversify into stuff like that, just because we're going into that digital future? Do you think that'll ever be? Like that goes down to people's goal, goals. If they want to be in it, they want to be in it. Then right. it comes down to how much, right? Do we like I talked to you about this? Do we have it yeah. segmented yeah. as home run dollars, right? Or where's our safe dollars? If we look over history of just the United States, where can we put money that's safe, right? So that way you build a good foundation and you can go be risk adverse in these other categories and know that the foundation is built on what at the current state. Then if these things changing, you can you can flip. So I think that's the better approach to it. I like right? that. Yeah. And that actually, dude, you're killing the segues. We have another question. This one's from Sock K Par. He said, just a few tips, if you could, on building a foundation for wealth at a young age. You want to kick us off there? Maybe something like if you could go back to young Ryan, seven, six, seven, eight years ago. How old were you that 19, 20 years old? Well, accumulating wealth has to be, well, one, I think it starts from, from generations down, right? Like those who came from money have a better success of growing. So like if, from building wealth in terms of family, if you can think bigger picture, I think that helps because then you start thinking about well, how do I leave more behind yeah. in terms of legacy because that will help yeah. build the wealth for the family. Yeah. Um, but I think it comes down to um, goals and um, learning to save for yourself first. Big time. And knowing that you're not going to get any type of massive wealth just working for the man. I like that. You have to own something. Do you have any tips on that? Just on like anything you would go back to like your younger self or what you would say has led you, like what would you really focus on for a foundational piece of your understanding of things in finance? What would I focus on for a foundational piece of understanding? Like yeah, like if you now knowing what you know now. What would you go back to four or five years ago and really be like, yo, I need to study this because this is a good, this is where the future is. This is where there's going to be information that's going to help me be more free, be more independent. Um, well, I feel like I've always looked at it as never to settle for a job that you feel is less than what you're worth. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like so many people settle or they just go like, at just so many underpaid jobs. And I was never that type of person. Like I... I think maybe my first job was like a, oh, this is what you make per hour. But other than that, like I was always just trying to be my own boss in a way. Like I was a waitress. I so was, your advice is don't get a salary. Right. Yeah. Like don't get a salary. Like continue to push yourself. I would sell my clothes on Poshmark. Like I would find other ways awesome. to make money to support like what it is I wanted to do at that period of my life. So I feel like you have to constantly be pushing yourself and striving for more and like just don't stagnate. Yeah. Because stagnated water smells like shit. <laughs> so like. <laughs> what do you got, Matt? On building that was very well answered, by the way. Thank on you. On foundational tips for people at a young age. I think um, one of the biggest things is that they're very scared and very frugal with their money when it comes to in terms of investing something that don't that they don't see right away. Like a material item, you invest your you put your money out and you get it right away. I totally agree. But like when it comes to financial literacy or just investing in yourself, you're very frugal and you don't want to spend. You'd rather beat around the bush, try and ask people rather than get involved and just actually spend the money and take the time out to become a better person. And that will build your foundation from there. Investing yourself. Literally, that's a good way literally, but everyone's frugal for that. Well, why do you think that is? Like, I mean, 
it is definitely because we want the instant gratification when you pay for something or you sign up for something or you decide you want to become a trader you want that money like you get into it i want the money I yeah want literally to, you want me to watch a course you want me to take notes you want me to do that not a lot of people think that way. and that's the thing it's, but it's crazy we want them to no, it's for you it's for you literally but the people that do that and come into it I, like they're my favorite people the people that come into something it doesn't have to be trading it could be any new skill yeah and they're just like I don't care if I make money right now, basically. Let me just learn this and then I'm gonna kill it on my own. I don't need you. Yeah. I've had conversations with people lately. Um, some of them I'm like, I know, like just from talking to them, I can tell they're gonna do their own testing. They're gonna do all their own work yeah. on this. So I'm like, you're gonna be great. Like I already know. Yeah, you, you can tell who it is. You really people. can. Yeah, absolutely. Because, 100%. You know what I mean? I yeah. Real quick, back to the point of like, or what Riley said about getting better. I think it, it's important, but I think it goes back to the, the person and what they want. Because some people are happy making whatever 100%. they want to make, being the baker. Yeah. Right? And because they get to do what they love every That's day. That's funny, I just talked about that literally yesterday. Yeah, so it's important there, but then even for you in the trading world, no one has to get into trading thinking that you have to make X amount of dollars, right? Like it, it, you can still make a substantial whatever that's good for you, but if, as long as you're doing it and you enjoy it. So I think that's important, like, right, like from, because some people think, well, I don't care. I don't need to make a hundred. I've literally talked to people like I, I'm, they're happy making seventy thousand. Sure. They, they don't. They don't. They love what they do. They don't need to make any more. But the, if you're making seventy and you hate what you do, but you can make seventy sixty five doing this or the whatever. Gary approach. Yeah, for sure. But like just being happy because I think there's a difference in waking up Monday morning and being pumped to go do something no matter how much you get paid. Well, lifestyle is everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because then what? You're gonna waste your life doing something you don't like, mm -hmm. right? Let's talk really quick. Two more questions. Real estate. We all have someone that we know right now that wants to get into real estate. We could probably name six people, maybe seven and a half. But we know a lot of people that are like, yo, I'm gonna go house hack. Yo, I'm gonna live in a duplex and rent it out and I'm gonna move out and have somebody else move in there. Or, yo, I'm just saving up, I'm gonna wait till this market dips. Where do you guys think we're at? Just with what's like with Corona, with knowing how many people are moving out of the cities and into the suburbs. That's exactly what I thought what, are we, right what are we seeing? Is that a housing bubble or is the market healthy? What do you guys think? What do you think, man? I think the market's not healthy at all. Why? I think it's highly um, inflated. Overvalued? Very. Like the homes are overvalued? Like when you see like a small little like two bedroom house in San Francisco for like you know, yeah, five thousand. That's the thing. You can right? find value, though. You still can. Of course, it depends. Just where. like stocks, like based on location, you yeah. can still find value. Yeah. In those. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Just based on, because like I'm interested to see all the people you're hearing from. You know, someone that just bought a house. I do. We both have parents that just sold. Oh yeah, houses. we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I do. Um, I think that the housing prices are definitely going to go down during all of this. What makes you say that? Um, initially, it's just a gut feeling, so that's where I'm going to go with it. Um, but to put more thought into it, if you think about what coronavirus has done, and if it's true that millions of people every week are filing for unemployment, that means like they're not able to pay their bills. And if people aren't able to pay their bills, like people are going to be getting kicked out of their houses. It's only for so long that the government can be like, oh yeah, like don't pay your mortgage this month. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine until it's not fine and then what are the prices of the housing market like i just feel like it's all gonna and not crash but just go down but you know? before we move forward she just sparked a few light bulbs in my head yeah go so for the uh, one of the um care for the care package right mm -hmm. for the coronavirus as like aid printing all the money giving it out one thing in there was tenants are allowed to be late on their rent so not only is the government getting involved in it's real estate, they're incentivizing malpractices with, you know, trust between a landlord, landlord and, and a tenant. tenant. Yeah, exactly. When that's supposed to be like one of the oldest and now, professions now, now in the, this country. Now, now the landlord has all this pressure that he has to come up with. To pay the bank. Exactly. And you, you brought up the, the term mortgage. I just want to break it down real quick. Mort is debt and <laughs> gash is contract. So <laughs> it's a death contract. So that's where the word originates from. How this to me makes sense is like the banks won't get paid their mortgages from a lot of people. We know that there's more defaults on mortgages over the last few months than ever before. Yeah. The banks don't get their mortgages. How long can they last on margin, I guess it would be, of not getting paid their mortgages before the banks then 
flip. And maybe that's what Warren Buffett sees, and that's why he's dumped a lot of bank stocks. Or they'll just start selling the houses for even cheaper because they'll take anything they can get. Yeah. JP Morgan says we're not even into the recession yet. Like, they've just, they, the bank itself has basically put out the statement. Jerome Powell said that we were in one. <laughs> it's interesting. Disagreement is all over the place. Some people, V-shape, K-shape, all these different letter shape recoveries. XYZ. Everybody has a different perspective. Right Literally. Now. What do you think about the houses? You actually owned a house. I did. You just owned that. You just bought a house, right? Or you rented. Rented. rented, yeah. So you're the only homeowner here. Was. Was. Yeah, and I sold it in here, made money. So, nice. I mean, in Florida. 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 America. Florida. <laughs> yeah. Here yeah. in Florida? Where? Uh, the North? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Good in the um, yeah. yeah. Navarre. Florida. Near Pensacola. Um, I, I, well, the people are definitely moving out of the cities and the suburb homes just from a, a small, small sample size. I mean, the market is hot in the burbs for sure. The market is hot. The market is hot in the burbs. So, how now, how long does that last? I don't know. Does, does, I think getting into real estate for the investment sake, I don't know. I've never really liked the flip model. Um, but for those, I have a friend in Alaska who did an amazing thing, who did the duplex thing, lived in, lived in half. Used the VA. Did he make money? Oh yeah, dude. He owns five properties now. He lives in Florida. He doesn't. He has a manager. It. And it's all because of one. I mean, I helped him guide. Got, I guided him to that. Being a landlord, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I never even did it, but I just pointed him like, "Hey, I think this would be something good." So, what do you think is going to happen going forward? Is it a good time to get into this? Well, that's what I was getting at. I think if you're getting in it for the long run, you're fine. Yeah. I could agree with that. But yeah. if you're gonna get into do, it for, do you think it's better to be in residential or commercial? Oh, oh, commercial yeah. real estate is probably gone. I wouldn't right? do that. Commercial's a no go. I wouldn't just because depending on what it is, no. depending on what yeah. it is, unless you can get a warehouse, unless you got the bucks of right. Warehouse. But even at that point, yeah. like the only thing that like yeah. think about it, Amazon or some other website is gonna probably put your commercial real estate. Whatever yeah, well, no, they're gonna buy it from you if you can get the land. There's a bunch of stuff going on like that. Yeah, 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 yeah they'll yeah. buy it from you. But if yeah. you're not the owner of the land, right? Then, but you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of these businesses, I feel like I feel like it has to be. Residential. You got to go residential. You got to. Well, it's better there. for the long term. People yeah. always need a place to live. Business so change. You, if you have 20 grand, 30, 40 grand right now, are we supposed to sit on it and wait before we get into the market to buy something? Or do we just get in now because you don't want to miss another day? You could die tomorrow kind of thing. That's how old you are. Okay. What do you mean? If you're 20. young enough to be in long enough, then mm -hmm. I wouldn't be so worried. I guess what we're Unless you have intensive set selling your house right away. Then. I think there's a difference between if you're buying a house to live in, it doesn't matter what it is. That's, yeah. Right. If you're buying a house because you want to live somewhere, then buy the house because you want to live there. Right. Right. Like, yeah, if you ever pay, you ever pay. I don't think that, like, don't look at ever getting any of that money back. If you just yeah. change your perspective to that, yeah. then you're fine. Look at it like a lost trade. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, an expense. You're not making. Well, you're living there. Right. Yeah. Right. Hey, my parents lost a and, lot of money on their house. You know, they put money in, but they, my dad says the same thing. We live there. We live there. We live there. You get no money back when you rent. So no money back. Right. Yeah, and you have zero chance. Of but where really I think where it really comes down to on both ends of it, you're right? not in debt too. Right. Whether you're in real estate on the renter renter side, like us three, or now you as well, but or if you're in the owner side, it's cash flow, right? Because if you have cash flow as a renter, you're going to be good. You can rent whatever, like we do, nice amenities, fix your stuff, whatever I need, right? I put the work order in. You can rent. Cash flow is good. If you got cash flow and you're a homeowner, you can fix your repairs. You can keep yourself going. If you're somebody that's house hacking and you have cash flow, you can pay the other side of the house potentially and keep the thing going. So cash flow still is really the key. And at the end of the day, if I have the cash flow, cash flow now, since that's in both equations, if we just take it out because it's the same in both equations, I'm gonna choose the renter because I don't have to take care of any maintenance and I hate maintenance. So I don't really see myself getting in the market anytime soon. That's just me. I think if I buy something, it would be like you said, to live there. I would buy it to live there and then I would either try to sell it or go into a different, like rent it out well, or single or like family that. home and whatever and, uh, the property managers and you don't gotta worry about it either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that card is full. So let's wrap it up. All right. I think we got a pretty good hour. What do we get? 30, 35 minutes. minutes. It's pretty good. We have that call in 15 minutes. That sucks that that card's full, but I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Let's, Ryan, wow, you want to pull that camera over and just straighten us out? Sure. Give us a straight angle real quick. Because I have one more that I think we should touch on. Thanks, Ryan. That's how we do it, people. Ryan's a... Hey, if you're watching this far or listening this far, we appreciate you. Oh, no. Right. We got no production crew. <laughs> hey, listen, as long as it's straight and they can kind of see us, most of them are just listening to take yeah. the value. And we got a lot there of listeners go. on Spotify and iTunes and stuff like that. So let's just talk about um, the metals. Let's talk about this. Because a lot of people hit us up about this. This is probably like 
one of our top two topics that people question us about because they see us, they start thinking about it a little bit more than they want to know more. Yeah. Right now, the question is, when we buy it, do we buy it not knowing where we can sell it back? That was one of the questions that was sent in. What do you think? I think before you buy anything, you should know what you want to do with it and how you're going to Gotta do it. Gotta have that. an exit. Yeah. You said that earlier. Yep. Gotta have an exit. I mean, an easy answer would be wherever you bought it from, nine times out of 10, they'll buy it back. 100%. That's yeah. what I always thought. Yeah. What I'm thinking about now, just to put this out there for everybody too, is, you know, this stuff is fun to touch and it's fun to cool and you know talk about and hold and show in the video and stuff. But in reality, if you're really trying to buy substantial amounts of this, you really shouldn't be holding it in your own house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what I've been looking into now is the next time that I buy it, it's gonna have to be either 100 ounces of silver at minimum or 10 ounces of gold at minimum or 20 ounces of gold. So, I'm sorry, 10 ounces, 20 grand. So they wanted, you know, you gotta put a decent investment into it, yeah. but if you do that, you can store it in a vault. So that's their minimum? That's the minimums. Okay. That's what I'm finding about. Uh, 100 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. Nice. Yeah, not that much. Wow, I learned. Yeah, I like that. so there you go, everybody. So check it out. I know Jay. <laughs> I learned. I, I learned. This is Jay. But think about it. this thing right here. This is 10 ounces. That's it. So this is right now, we're at about $25 an ounce, right? Something like that for silver. And then they're getting waxed over the spot price. But, yeah, you know. so, but let's just call it 300 bucks. Let's say that. Okay. Yeah. If you want to invest, like let's just say twenty grand into metals, I mean this is heavy. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's gonna be like you're literally gonna have you need saves. Yeah. So the I think the idea for me, and I want to hear what you guys think. These really are cool. Fun, they're fun to touch and stuff, but it's really got to go to a vault, and it's really got to be long term. Because if I'm buying that much of it and I'm putting it in a vault, probably in a country like like either Singapore, Switzerland, New York, um, maybe London, somewhere like that, I can't even go see it. Yeah. I can't even get there. No. You know what I'm saying? Right now, especially with COVID. So like, what, at that point, it's such a long-term investment. What do you guys see in this? Do you see any value in that? Yeah, I, for long-term, I think it, if that's part of your strategy. Yeah. Yeah, I think if it's, it, I mean, I think about what, are you buying it just to preserve the dollar, right? Because you think it's going to move faster, you preserve it for legacy, to pass on. Sure. Is that like, or, you know, because it's definitely not. Five year flip. No, right? definitely not. You know? What do you think, Ryan? Could have been actually. Well, yeah, yeah recently, about five years ago, you'd yeah. be really happy. You'd be, so, yeah, silver. But you can't done. go into those expectations to set going in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think, Ryan? Um, for silver specifically, I think that we'll always have some of it that we hold on to because I picture myself being like a great great grandma, like 150 years old, giving it to my <laughs> great grandchildren, like, this is your last name. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Well, what was the <laughs> no, My answer wasn't that serious. Mm -hmm. That's what threw you off. Yeah. For long term value, I know you're a believer. In oh, this. yeah. I was yeah. asking them to see what their thoughts were on the long term value. My long term value, the reason why I hold it. Do you it think it's worth investing it in to put this stuff in a One billion percent. Like, I, it, it remains. One billion purchase. percent. <laughs> <laughs> it holds your purchasing power. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. Like, it has the biggest track record. Like, I don't even. The facts are there. The, it's all there. Yeah. That's why I'm feeling like A serious needs answer? Service. Like, silver is being used so much more nowadays for technology and the world that our go uh, the, the world that we live in and the direction <laughs> that it's going with technology um like silver just makes sense to invest in because it's used in so much and unless they dollars. can mine it on asteroids and the moon in which right. case i think then it could decrease value or we can play the flip side and say it might increase the value because it'd be more expensive to go okay. get it and well, it might be more rare if we entertain that right we didn't talk about this that much last time the idea of like if you elon getting to the like getting to Mars, asteroids, getting, asteroids, asteroids, yeah. and getting gold and silver off the asteroids, and just flood the supply. Okay, it's heavy, bro. Like this. How you bringing it back? Know, but I'm, right. How are you? How are they going to? Well, I'm pretty sure if they're able to get there, they're smart enough to make it feasible to. But think about it. Think about it. It's going to crash, bro. If it's if the if the rocket, like I'm not, I'm an idiot, bro. I am an idiot. Like I'm an idiot. That's why you're smart. If the, if the rocket comes up with this much weight. But then it comes back with all this weight. Wait, I'm so confused. Get what I'm here. saying? Wait, it's gonna need it's gonna need rockets on on the counter. Right, it's gonna need no, to somehow they're, catch this thing. They're it's gonna like net. they're gonna shoot the <laughs> asteroid out of the sky and make it crash into Earth somewhere and then just mine it from Earth. Mm. <laughs> I think we can end here. Just bring the <laughs> asteroid down and then mine it, not right. mine it up there. Yeah. That's a lot smarter. Laser it out of the sky. Or we can just shoot start a nuke at it. Before we go out there, the easier approach was to start pulling everyone's teeth out that have silver in there. My grandma. There you go. Yeah. All the old people. Yeah, they all. It's crazy. 
So, oh, what if we actually went to all the, the grave sites? And people like, definitely oh, do that. Yeah. Really? Yes. People definitely Holy do that. Holy crap. That's real. I never thought of that. That's real. Grave robbers. That's real. We need, this is why we that's need to think about, about it. Yeah, we don't even need to go down the hole, but that's real. I actually know a lot about the body stuff with like their watches. and Oh my God. I know where I'm getting my next roller. That's crazy. Yo, that is crazy. What do you think about it? People be doing that for real? What do you think the body that's, looks like? That's real. Bones? When I die, I put my money in the grave. He's lying. He's not putting any money in the grave. There's no money in there. Because there's people like the Brian's friends that rob graves. <laughs> but you're his friend. No, I'm On a more serious note, I think the if that was the case, like Astro mining, yeah. I think the production costs and like the mining costs would be so high that That's the valuation saying. of silver would have to be astronomically so high to make it worth it. Exactly. Yeah. We would have to be saying. like quadzillion billionaires, like can't even put a word on it. But what if it's because they need it for all the technology that they're created? They need these mass supplies of silver, like they're yeah. willing to go those lines. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. It would have to adjust. Well, yeah. we would literally be rich. Demand, the price would go higher. Yeah. Just right. Right. Ridiculous. Well, it, like, what's the highest silver has ever been? Like 50, 50 yeah. 50 something? Roughly. Okay, so like think of, like this is why you have Someone to, around. you have to, like it's weird. It's hard to understand, for me at least, because again, like I'm an idiot. We're talking about gold per ounce is two thousand dollars, just about right now, a little under that. Okay, we're talking about silver. Here's an ounce of silver. This ounce of silver is only thirty dollars right now. Okay, yeah. what if it one day is worth two thousand dollars? Because over time, what's the only thing that's still money? This. So it doesn't seem that far off, is it? No. It being tied to the dollar by default inherently is just going to go up. The it dollar is not going to just out of nowhere get strong. Say that again. It being that. priced in dollars yes. is the only reason why it's going to be valued so high. Because it's tied to a dollar that's going down. Got it. It's going to take and this is what I was saying to you about the value of the price gold. of gold. Gold yeah. itself on your necklace, like my gold, my rose gold, doesn't have to get more valuable. The dollar It's the I dollar mean, that's bringing going down. Yeah. And yeah. the only reason why the dollar has survived so long, it just came in my head, yeah. it's because we can export our inflation by, by selling, dropping off. Isn't it by the of yeah, yeah by selling the debt and, and making everyone hold X amount right. of US dollars in reserves. Right. Hold X amount of bonds and reserves. Japan and China are the biggest US debt holders. Those and two. China just said that they want to reduce their, their balance sheet on right. the bond That's side of saying. things, which will be detrimental to the dollar. How long do you think the dollar has where it's at? Like how long until Well if they start doing that? Could it go to zero? Would it actually touch zero or would it just be like the like what's the Zimbabwe uh, dollar? Like a utop utopia world? What's the Zimbabwe dollar worth right now? You know what I'm saying? So like, what does the, the currency, like, like, it, right? What does the, the currency go to? I don't, but I don't think you can make that comparison. No. Yeah, that's deep. No. That's does that hard. The strength of us. That's well, what that's even, if the, yeah. if, even if the dollar index, like the, that's the dollar against like a basket of seven currencies. Even if that goes to 60, 70, it's never been that low in our lifetime. I think the lowest it's been on the chart that I saw was like 77. I could be so wrong, but I think it's like 70. I I can. And it was in the 80s, I think. I can. I, I could really think that we take out a new loan. Within the, within the next three to five years. Well, that's going to be sure. Euro, Euro USD higher. All we should be doing then is buying Euro pairs on almost a daily basis, looking for long opportunities on all the Euro pairs, right? Well, if, that's if, what I'm going to do. If, if Europe's currency is able and, to... Well, whenever the dollar... In, there's a direct correlation. It's an inverse correlation between the dollar index and Euro USD. Yeah, of course. Right? So if, yeah. if the dollar index, if we know it's going lower, Euro USD, I'm going to be looking for long opportunities. The, the index is actually made up with Euro dollars. Right, right, oh. right. But yeah, they are completely. So you think we're taking out a new low? One billion percent. What would that do? But I mean, imagine that for the so confident, so, so confident. confident. But imagine what that would look like for the economy. Like think about where people would be in that position with right. Where it just all, doesn't make sense have to me. Be the how I, I to me, I don't see how we could stop printing and raise rates. If right. we raise rates, the stock market is going to hell. Right. People are losing everything they have. We physically cannot raise rates. They said on 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 their speech, they said, "I'm not even thinking." About thinking about raising rates. Exactly. Yeah, it's hard. So if they can't do that, the dollar will never get stronger. Never by default. It's the rules of the game. In your course, do you tell people how to diversify and like? Yeah, one hundred percent. That's like my biggest. And your course was just revamped, right? Well, I'm working on the content now. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, it's how long do you think that's gonna take? Maybe a month or two. Cool. So soon. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll link that down below. Yeah. We'll put that in the description. For sure. So people can. Get people that I think it's a wheel. Yeah, also. most definitely. Did you get to check out my course yet since I added you? No. No, I, just, did you, I don't think you sent yeah, me all the stuff, bro. You did? <laughs> I told you I was going to add you. You know I added you. Oh, man. All right. I'll send you all the stuff, too. You got to you gotta yeah. watch it. I want your feedback on it. Uh, no, no, definitely. I'll send right. you mine, too. I want to hear yours. Right. I, wanna, I want you to look at it before the new content. 
That makes sense. And then I want to see it after. And, yeah, and then see after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. That's, That's what awesome. I want to see. All right, cool. Well, listen, this was good, guys. I appreciate it. I'm glad that we uh, we got it done. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thanks for sticking through with us, even though we have to bail on the other camera. Yeah. Code Bye. word? Blueberries. Riley's code word for the video. If you're watching all Whoa, we right. actually want to get blueberry wine. Mm, that's, that's good. That's really, that. really, really good. Really? Have you? I used to work in a winery. Whole new podcast. Blueberry wine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.